Yeah, I think for sure, um, you know, in this day and age, you, you really said it right there. There's there's obviously the physical part of it. When you look at his development over the course of the offseason, uh, we think he's done a tremendous job. But the two things that jump out would be the leadership piece and the mental approach. You know, I think uh, you look at the day and age these kids are playing in now uh, with as much as surrounding them with the media, with the fan bases. Uh, We've got to spend an equal amount of time on the mental approach to his game, how he's going to handle the ups and downs of, of each week uh, as we do with the scheme and, and as we do with uh, his physical development. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's making sure it's equal. You know, I think I, I laugh because I've been watching this, uh, you know, the Netflix documentary with these quarterbacks, and you see – uh, inside the mind of a guy like Kirk Cousins or Marcus Mariota's wife is reviewing the game plan with him on, on a Tuesday. And so I think, uh, you know, the physical sometimes now our job, uh, Ben Hilgard's done such a great job with our, uh, our strength program. And when you see Taylor and you see what he looks like, uh, there's a natural progression there, if you will. But I think uh, certainly from the schematic standpoint, what it takes to prepare uh, to have an attack mindset and play free, and then obviously from a, uh, uh, a mental standpoint, making sure that, that we go through the process to be aware of the ups and downs in games, to stay focused uh, and do what we call, you know, make it about mental endurance. Can you stay focused one play at a time for, for three and a half, four hours at a time and uh, always having this constant state of improvement? You obviously never want to see a player go down, but, you know, with Latrell out, you know, you guys may be in a little better position than you normally would be just with the talent you have. You know, uh, Andy mentioned Eric is one of the guys who could kind of step up. Who else do you think could kind of step up to, to fill that role? Yeah, Latrell hurts, you know, because I think uh, every team's got players and, and the versatility and the experience. Uh, but for Latrell personality-wise, I think certain guys come into a program and, and certainly they're ready-made. And then there's guys that come in and just keep growing and growing and growing. And, and for me personally, Latrell's a guy uh, – that personality always got that smile on his face, so I, I don't think he can replace that side of it. Um, I do think, you know, you mentioned it, Eric McAllister's a guy who's got great length. Um, I just think he's a guy that, that, you know, has turned up the preparation. He, he knows what he's doing. He's taking it extremely serious. He's acting like a pro. Uh, Billy Bowens has always had, had that kind of demeanor to him as well from the day I took this job. He, he's a professional-style college athlete. He knows what he's doing. He's a great leader. Steph Cobb uh, comes to mind as well. You know, I mean, that's a guy who we're extremely excited about. I uh, just think he does all the things at that position, uh, the dirty work, if you will. He's willing to put his face in there. Uh, he, he's willing to do whatever it takes to win, and I think that group's got a lot of guys will create a lot of uh, competition there. Kenny kept saying, you know, that you know, for offense, you know, it's a, it's a personal or player-driven thing. How, how do you bring out the best in your players and put them in the, the best position to succeed, I guess? Yeah, I think it's, uh, again, we touched on it, you know, from a, from a mental standpoint as well. I mean, we want these guys playing on the attack, and I think uh, uh, it starts for these guys of, of accepting it, you know, accepting being a big-time college football player in this kind of media market. Uh, I tell them, number two, you got to exhaust your preparation. You know, it's got to come to the point where you feel you have prepared, emptied your tank to be able to just go and play free, to allow yourself on game day to play at the level you need to play at. But uh, I think I heard it once, you know, you get the ball to your best player over and over again, and if God forbid something happens to him, you get it to the next guy and then the next guy. So we're fortunate here. We feel like we've got a good, deep, talented roster. Uh, we'll create a lot of competition. Two receivers for a second. Uh, in your opinion, do you need a, a true number one receiver to emerge to be successful, or in some ways is the by committee approach a, a more difficult thing to defend? Yeah, I think as long as you're playing to their strengths, uh, I don't know if you necessarily need to have a number one guy. I do think you need to make sure – uh, you got guys that fit different roles in that receiver room, right? From a standpoint of who's going to be that vertical threat uh, to, to force defenses to close in the middle of the field, who's going to be the guy that's going to be consistent uh, game in and day out, game out inside of the hashes making tough plays, who's the shiftier guy. And so I think by doing that, uh, over the course of the years, we, we've created some versatility at that position. Finding these guys' strengths, were you able to do that completely in spring ball, or is that still an ongoing process over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, always an ongoing process. Obviously, to see the uh, the jumps guys take from from an off season and the work, but uh, we we feel like you know 
through the course of spring, through the course of summer, we've got a good idea of the different things these guys uh, excel at, and uh, we'll obviously build the offense around that. Leadership and a mental approach when it comes to tail, just to kind of get into your mind and how you operate. How do you do that? How do you coach that? How do you push and promote that? Yeah, I think the first thing is just the awareness of it. You know, I think, uh, you know, from the standpoint of in practice, right, I think naturally we all, uh, we have a plan and there's a level of energy. And when things are going good, you may get high. When things aren't going good, you may get a little bit lower. And so I think it starts with that, with uh, that awareness of, as game-like as we can make these practices, as game-like as we can make these scrimmages, to feel the highs, feel the lows, get right back and focus in on your assignment. I think that's the toughest challenge about the position, I really do, is, uh, you know, September 2nd, large environment, ABC, you name it. Uh, there's a lot of distractions, but how can we just maintain the focus, maintain one play at a time? And again, I think that's the last challenge for a lot of these guys at this position. If you can do that for a long time, uh, it can translate to the NFL. Open competition right now for backup quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll say this about those guys. I mean, I think you got a chance to see Maddox in that spring game. Uh, he does certain things at that position uh, that probably nobody in that room does. I think he's an old school throwback guy. He can manage the pocket. He's extremely accurate, extremely tough, um, and, and he's done a tremendous job. C.J. Tiller, uh, for the years we've probably been here, is as talented as a freshman. Uh, from, from a physicality standpoint. So uh, those two guys have, have done a great, great job. We're excited about their competition. We're excited about, you know, the competition in the room overall. Sure. Uh, Maddox, I mean, he's a guy you kind of look at him. He's only 5'10", but he just gets out there, and it seems like he has this composure and poise that he's ready to lead the offense. I mean, is that accurate? And, you know, how does he, how does he work um, – you know, when he is the, you know, in there and, and how does he lead guys? Yeah, I think he leads by example. I mean, I think he knows exactly who he is, you know, and I think that's so important with these guys from a leadership standpoint. He's not stepping into it, trying to be somebody who's, who, uh, who he's not. I think the thing about his game, uh, you know, I always laugh. Guys like that are probably been under center since they were in diapers and taken thousands and thousands of reps. Uh, it's no surprise when you look at what he did uh, from his high school situation and things like completion percentage uh, and what he was able to accomplish. I think he does a lot of things that are very, uh, you know, second nature to him, and, and that's a huge strength. Where do you think Wayne is when he's good? I would say, you know, more than just physically what it's going to take to become an elite player. Um, I think naturally, like you guys have said, right, there's one thing coming off the, be the bench and, and being able to play, not overthinking it. Then there's the natural progression of, okay, now I'm, I'm starting to get that information. I've just been, uh, you know, I've been pleased from a leadership standpoint on what that looks like and his mental approach. I think from a day-to-day -day meeting standpoint, um, I, d I don't know if I necessarily felt when I got here he was the guy in the meeting room uh, that, that was the the – Highest competency level, if you will, but I just feel, you know, over the course of the summer, uh, I just feel like we've got a, a different kind of player there. Before JHI had a monster 2014 season, he came back that season looking like he won or could handle 350 carries, uh, and he did. When it comes to, the, you know, whether it be Ashton or George, uh, pound for pound, are they some of the strongest guys on the team? How, how ready is that duo to, to carry as much as you need them to? Yeah, we think they're ready. <laughs> I mean, I just look at, uh, Again, you look at George, and, and I can't tell you how, how proud right this fan base should be of that guy. That is probably the most humble guy we have, uh, you know, maybe in, the, in, in, this, in this room day in and day out, his work ethic. Uh, he knows what it takes, uh, and he works that way day in, day out. So uh, Ash is an interesting one, man. I think he's a guy that's totally uh, transformed his body. He's cut weight. He looks even more explosive, if you guys can believe that. So... Uh, it's interesting. I think, uh, you know, like you guys said about that wide receiver group and, and having the versatility of different guys, I think those two can play off of each other and, and, and take it to the next level. Personality-wise, how are they a little bit different? Because, I mean, George will be lucky to get a few words out of him. Ashton, he's doing like backflips at the softball game. So personality-wise, how, how do they jive? Yeah, I think you kind of said it. You know, I think uh, – Who's most likely to like pull a prank on you as an offensive coordinator? Probably Ash, you know, and 
who's most likely to watch your kids for a whole week? Probably George. So, uh, but both awesome dudes. And, uh, you know, again, I just think it's so funny because uh, George, they sit next to each other in the meeting room and uh, Ash will always have that big smile and get going. And I think at times George has got to be like the uncle saying, hey, man, let's lock it in. So, uh, but two awesome dudes who compete every day and uh, we're excited to have them. Guys, you know, playing, you know, you guys got in a, a running back like Breezy Dubar. Where does that kind of leave him for this season? Is Are you guys going to try to kind of redshirt him? Could he see some playing time? Yeah, well, I, I know this is a reoccurring theme, but there's just a ton of depth at that position. You know, it's uh, you'll hear about George, you'll hear about Ash, but uh, Caden Dudley's done a tremendous job. Tyler Crow is a guy we're relying on. And so uh, I can tell you this about Breezy. Uh, he's certainly one of those guys just this summer when you watch him. Uh, the explosiveness jumps out, right? So uh, obviously we're excited about him this fall camp. We'll have to make a lot of decisions based off that. But I cannot stress to you, you know who the top two high-end guys maybe are in that room, but the depth of that room is extremely encouraging. Andy said that uh, he thought that there was an advantage having played here and then come back and coach here. You've obviously been a lot of places, but this is the first time you've been back as a coach here. What Have you noticed any advantages that you've Yeah, I think, uh, you know, certainly knowing uh, the blood, sweat, and tears of the former players and the tradition of this place has, has certainly been familiar, I would say. But I think just like anything, you know, you, you, you leave home, if you will, and you go to all these other places, and then you're somewhat reminded of, of what the values are of this program. And I think uh, I've said a lot about uh, Boise State. I think it's, it's the community, it's the people, and it's this blue collar mentality that if you enter these doors, that's the standard. And I just, uh, I feel strongly about that. I feel strongly about our players. As you know, installations, constantly trying to put more and more in. This is a group that as long as they get the information the night before, they're willing to do whatever it takes to, to put their best foot forward. And Capel's being out, it's going to create some opportunities for some other young receivers. I'm guessing Prince Strawn is one of those guys. In terms of, you know, skill set, IQ, all that stuff, where is he right now? How close is he to getting on the field? Yeah, I think he's impressive. I mean, nowadays you look at these guys that come early, you know, and, and, and the amount of jump it makes uh, versus maybe a guy that might come in the summer. Prince is a guy that was with us all spring. Uh, it's funny because we had a, uh, we had like a freshman barbecue at Andy's house, and I go, why are you here? And he's like, I'm a freshman coach. And I'm like, really? Just because, again, for me, it's like I've seen him now. We've already been through a spring. So uh, he was able to put in that work with the football side of it, but also have a really, really impressive summer. And we're excited about getting him going. Right. A couple weeks after you were hired, they hired, uh, you know, Jimmy Montgomery. And, you know, were you a part of, of getting him to Boise? And what, what does he bring as a young coach who just seems to have a really cool demeanor? Yeah, super, super impressed with Jimmy. I just think when you look at his lineage and you look at uh, where he's been, he, he really comes from a huge offensive line background, and I think that's unique. Um, certainly just his understanding of the run game, but also protections. Uh, at times I feel like we're, we're stealing some expertise there just from the standpoint of his development uh, with knowing the offensive line play, knowing the run game, uh, and certainly been around a lot of successful programs several times during you know during spring camp but w will there be a continued emphasis and a priority to, to push him and, and develop the deep ball push 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 and develop that deep ball and did you feel that that was a, a lacking piece of this offense last year you know I just think you always got to be balanced and I, I say this to these guys at the quarterback room all the time the ability to hit and finish 40 plus throws is is your three-point shot if you will in basketball and it's got to be something that we've got to be able to throw the ball downfield at an elite level. Um, I think even furthermore, as we've talked about it, the ability to run the ball is, uh, is going to dictate a lot of defenses maybe to play us tighter. And uh, our ability to do that uh, will, will be critical for our success. Offense likes to run multiple tight ends, as you well know. Um, after Riley, you know, Matt Lauder played in all 14 games last season. I know Jack Beresford, you know, kind of hit transferred over from the defensive side to offensive side. What, what do you kind of see? Who are some of your options there, uh, you know, at the tight end position after Riley? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you talked about Matt. I think Austin, Terry, Luke Voorhees are two guys that, um, again, are very diligent, come to work every day, and we're excited to see the growth they've made uh, over the course of summer and heading into fall camp. And so 
Uh, certainly a group that we've got to develop talent at, you know what I mean, and develop depth at, if you will. Um, but we feel good, certainly, about those four guys in the rotation and the young guys coming. Coach, what do you want to see week you know, one in a fall camp? What do you hammer early on and uh, to set the tone? Yeah, I think just the mentality starts there, uh, certainly with these guys. Uh, I don't want to feel like a first-year offense, if you will. I think there's been uh, a lot of meshing of what they've done, what we like to do. And so I'd like to see these guys playing fast. Um, I'd like to see great communication um, and, again, cutting it loose. You kind of touched on it with Donnie's question earlier, but now that you know it's been over half a year that you've been back, what's it meant to you to come back to Boise State so far? Yeah, it's meant a lot. You know, I think uh, – it's the opportunity to carry on the standard here, you know, and it's been tremendous of uh, 25, 30 years and, and different faces and different players and different coaches, um, but but the culture has stayed intact. And uh, I know Coach Avalos has uh, done a tremendous job over the course of the last two years and, and, and going through some ups and downs, but um, to have the opportunity in a leadership role to know that every day you come to work and you're you're holding the standard playing for the guys that came before you, the players that came before you, the coaches that do it, it means a lot.